In this video, I want to show you how you can create your rejection region for a hypothesis test. I have three different sets of null and alternative hypotheses, and I also have three different or a couple of different um, levels of significance that go along with them. And then I'm going to draw the picture down here. If you use rejection regions for a hypothesis test, the, one of the first things that you should look at is the symbol in your null, or, or excuse me, your symbol in the alternative hypothesis. Okay, this symbol right here tells me that this is going to be a right-tailed test. The symbol greater than here is going to lead me to a right tailed test. Now when I look at the other symbols, the symbol in the middle here is going to lead me to a left tailed test and the symbol on the far right side here is going to lead me to a two tailed test. But let's focus on the right tailed test to begin with. When I'm looking at this right tailed test and I'm trying to draw a picture of my rejection region, once I know that it's a right tailed test, I can just put, I mean, your picture doesn't have to be perfect, but I can go ahead and put a line right here that represents a cutoff point for my level of significance. And this level of significance right here, alpha equals 0.05, is going to be the area inside the tail which creates my rejection region. So this blue shaded region that I've got right there, that is called the rejection region. I'm just going to go RR so you can see it. Okay. Now, in order to make this rejection region useful for us, we need to find the z-score that cuts off this rejection region. And the z-score is based on this idea of alpha. Alpha, being the significance level, is equal to the area of the shaded region. So this shaded region, which is my rejection region, takes on the, or is equal to the, um, is equal to alpha, 0.05. Well, if 0.05 of my area under the curve is to the right of this z-score, that means that 95% is to the left of that z-score. So now that I know that 95% is to the left and 5% is to the right, which makes my rejection region, I can use my calculator to figure out the z-score that, that cuts off this rejection region. So I'm going to jump to my calculator here. And the function on my calculator that I'm going to use is the inverse norm function. I'm going to hit second and then vars to get to my distribution menu. And I want to go down to number three, and that's inverse norm. That means the inverse of norm of the normal model. And this function on your calculator wants a number. And the number that you need to give it is the area to the left of the z-score that you want to find. So back here in my picture, 95% of the data is to the left of the z-score that I want. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to go inverse norm of 0.95. When I hit enter, it gives me the z-score that cuts off that rejection region, 1.64. I'm going to go ahead and round off. So 1.64 is the value that cuts off my rejection region. Now I'm going to go a little bit quicker for these other two. This symbol right here in the alternative tells me that I'm going to be doing a left-tailed test. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right here to represent the cutoff point for my rejection region. I'm going to go ahead and shade my rejection region. Shade it right here. That's my rejection region. And my alpha that I have right here is equal to 0.1. So this is a different alpha, but it tells me that 0.10 is right here that creates my rejection region. Now maybe I should move this over a little bit so this particular picture looks a little bit more in conjunction with the other one, in proportion, I guess I should say. <clears throat> so here's my rejection region, of, and the area under the curve is 0.1. There's my rejection region. Um, what I'm looking for now is the z-score that cuts off this rejection region. 
Well, I'm going to go to my calculator, and the calculator wants the area to the left. Well, I already have the area to the left since this is a left-tailed test. So I'm going to go to my calculator and type in inverse norm for 0.1. Here we go. I go second, vars, number three, inverse norm for 0.1. And when I hit enter, I get negative 1.28. I'll round it off right there. So this z-score that cuts off my rejection region is negative 1.28. Finally, this last example, the symbol in the alternative hypothesis is a not equal to symbol. And that is that leads me to a two-tailed test. Two-tailed. Now I want to emphasize here that when you have a two-tailed test, you can go ahead and draw a line to designate your rejection re region on both sides since it's two-tailed, but your level of significance, alpha, gets split between the two tails. So alpha being 0.1 gets split into the two tails, and half of it goes over here, and half of it goes over here. So when I shade this rejection region right here and right here, Half of alpha is 0.05, and the other half of alpha is 0.05. So 0.05 of alpha goes right here, and point, the other 0.05 of alpha goes right here. Now I need to find two z-scores. I need to find this z-score and this z-score in order to create my rejection region. I actually have my rejection region being on both sides of the curve. Well... Again, I'm going to go to my calculator, and my calculator, using the inverse norm function, wants the area to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and type in inverse norm for 0.05, and that's going to give me the z-score that goes right here, that cuts off that bottom 5%. So here we go again. I'm going to go second, vars, number three, inverse norm for 0.05. I guess I really didn't have to do this because I've already done it once. It's negative 1.64. Now, when I say I've already done it once, what I'm saying is that since this is a symmetrical curve, the z-score here is going to be equal to the z-score here, only the symbols will be different. This is a negative z-score. This will be the opposite, which is the positive z-score. So once I find the one on the left, I've already got the one on the right. It's just not negative. It's positive. So there's the z-score that cuts off my rejection region. Now, again, the purpose of this video is just to help you create the rejection region, draw a picture of it, and find the z-score that cuts off that rejection region. In some of my um, other videos, I explain how you can use the rejection region to determine what you're going to do with your hypothesis test. I hope this has helped. Thank you for watching the video, and have fun in your stats class.